Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for part two of the Q&A. So let's go ahead and get this started. All right, first question. So last night I got woken up several times with intense joint pain in my knees, shoulders, ankles, and wrist. Uh, I've also had a hard time sleeping lately. Uh, work has been stressful. I feel like I've reached a point of overreaching. Should I take a week off? Um, I'm not a big fan of weeks off. Now, I'm not saying I don't take weeks off, but that's for other reasons. It's not necessarily because I think it's ideal. So, taking a week off. No, you need a deload, though. Deload. Do a bunch of active recovery. Come in and cut your weights 50%. Cut your volume in half. In other words, lifts you do 300 pounds on, cut them down to 150. Do active recovery, band work. Right? Things like that. But yeah, you need to deload. You need to deload. Now, a lot of times people will say, well, most people don't train hard enough to overtrain or to overreach. And that's true. 99% of people don't. However, in the case of Jerry here, he said his work has been really stressful. Okay, He's had a hard time sleeping. Well, that could push you into overreaching even if you're training at volumes that are a third of what I do. Okay. And I don't train enough to over overtrain. I only hit one re a single max every day, you know, with 15, 20 sets of supplemental lifts, right? That's not enough to overtrain, by the way. Uh, you could possibly overreach short term off and on doing that. That's not enough to reach over training state. It really isn't. You're not going to do that with weights. It's almost impossible to do it with weights. It can be done, but it's hard. So the issue is a lack of recovery. Well, you need to get your stress management on point. You need to go ahead and deload. Because if you're having pain like that, you definitely are under-recovered. It's time to take a deload. You need to increase your protein. This is where we can just knock the stupidity of veganism away. You need to increase your protein quality and quantity. Whatever you're eating right now, go ahead and add another 50 to 60 grams of animal source protein to it every day. Yes, it matters. Yes, it matters. Uh, for reasons I'm not going to get into with bioavailability. Basically, plant-based proteins are a half a gram of protein. So, and, and that's why you see a lot of these vegans who need 400 grams of protein a day from shakes, things like that, because the, the protein quality is much, much lower in terms of absorption. So you need more animal source protein. Probably need to bump the fat in your diet a hair. Okay. Get your inflammation back under control. Uh, you need to take your deload. And you need to figure out how you can manage your stress better. Right? You need to do something to help you sleep. Melatonin. Turn off everything. Stay in a dark room. Keep it cooler at night. You need to get your sleep quality up. And you need to find a way to deal with the stress of your work. Now, I can't tell you what that is. I don't know your life. But you need to. You need to. Or this is going to reoccur again. It's the best advice I can give you, brother. All right, next question. For overall shoulder strength and hypertrophy, would doing a standing clean and press for every rep be better than or about equal to just pressing overhead without the clean? By the way, your trimming down has been working to improve your credibility and image as a coach. Well, thank you. Okay, uh, let's step back and answer just a question. I'm not saying a clean and press isn't a valuable exercise. I'm not saying there can't be some merits to cleaning the weight up sometimes. Okay. I'm going to answer your question for overall shoulder strength and hypertrophy. Mm, strict press would be better. Right? Unracking. Just take it out of a rack. Why? It's going to be more efficient use of your resources. Because, because realistically, if you're doing rep work on a strict press, which is generally going to be what we want for overall shoulder strength and hypertrophy as a baseline, okay, if you're going to be doing that, you're not using enough weight to get much benefit from a clean. You're practicing getting a clean in. But take someone like me. I, I do a bunch of sets of 10, for example, with 135 on a strict press all the time. You guys know my max is 225 plus. For a guy at my strength, is there any value in some 135 cleans from a hypertrophy perspective? No. 
Am I going to get any size out of that? Probably not. It's not fatiguing enough. So let's come over to you. You may be stronger. You may be weaker than me. Is your strict press enough weight to get a real training stimulus out of a clean, or is it just practicing getting a clean in? Okay. Let's come over to the point. You said shoulder strength and hypertrophy. No, man, just, just strict press it if that's the goal. Right? Just strict press it. Now, if someone's doing what I do with the axle bar and they wanted to clean it up for the extra grip training, now that might be something, right? Cleaning up an axle bar for strict pressing. Now that's got some, a good grip component to it. But you didn't ask about grip training. You asked about shoulder strength, right? So I'll keep it context specific to your question, brother. And in that context, no, man, just, just unrack it out of the rack and press it. Press it. It's all context dependent. If you need a bunch of power clean practice for technical purposes, go ahead and do the cleans, right? If you feel that you need that. I personally don't. I might one day. So it's all context specific. All right, next question and possibly last question of the week. Why with chin-ups on the second set, I always do one rep less than my first, and on my third, I do two reps less than the first. I rest enough time. Well, here's my question. Are you sure you rest enough time? Because I'm going to go out on a limb and say that if you did a set of weighted chin-ups all the way to failure, your rest time is going to be one to two days. Right? Rest time is going to be one to two days. Are you just doing a challenging set? Well, you need to look at the, the mechanics involved in a weighted chin-up. Look at the mechanics involved in a weighted chin-up. It's a very taxing exercise. Okay? Whole body moves through space and it has a grip intensive component. Think in terms of the whole systemic stress of that. If you do a challenging set that's one rep away, one rep from failure. Let's say your, your rep max is eight reps and you do seven. Eight would have been a grinder. To replicate that seven on a movement like that, this is, this is not a curl. It's not a lateral raise. A lot of muscle involved with again a grip component involved you might need four or five minutes to replicate that so how much is enough time now you, you're saying here that you get one rep less two reps less are you taking those to failure because that's the only way you're doing that otherwise you're choosing to terminate it there right in that case you're doing seven on your first set and you're choosing to stop at six and then choosing to stop at five so I'm assuming, based upon what you wrote, that you're taking them to failure. When you do big movements, and the weighted chin-up qualifies as a big movement, a squat, a deadlift, a bench, those are all big movements. When you do them to failure, to actual failure, to where you can't do another rep, or you get a grindy rep, right? you're not going to replicate it for a second set. Your odds of being able to hit that exact same number of reps again in the same workout is probably less than 50%. Less than 50%. We don't take big exercises to muscle failure. And I think this is something that, that doesn't get discussed enough. Maybe I need to make individual videos on this more. We take big multi-joint exercises, big movements. And a weighted chin-up counts as, I, I think that counts as a big movement. Look at the amount of muscle mass involved. We take them to technical failure. Take them to technical failure. You can take smaller exercises to muscle failure. That's fine. In fact, a lot of times you can replicate the performance two or three sets in a row. Sometimes four, right? Occasionally you can get up to four sets to absolute failure without losing a rep. 
we don't take big exercises to failure, muscle failure. You take them to technical failure. Does the form break down? Does it look grindy? Does it look like crap? Do you have to rest pause to get the last rep? Okay, that's technical failure. If you're taking them to muscle failure, you're not going to be able to do that. It's a big exercise. You shouldn't expect to. If you could, you really aren't taking them to the failure you think they are, or you're a freak. You're not normal. So it's perfectly normal in that case. All right, guys, but well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.